Before you begin the video, my opinion is that the game should be experienced knowing as little as possible going in, at least for the first few playthroughs. So here's a too long, don't wanna watch to maybe convince you to play the game. The game is a racing sim light, kinda similar to Princess Maker series, but instead of racing a daughter, you race a streamer. And said streamer is mentally unstable and is really, really dependent on you. The game has unexpectedly solid writing and jokes full of references. You may even enjoy it a lot more if you're familiar with streaming culture. Has 23 endings of varying degree of shit. It's short enough that one playthrough can be cleared in less than an hour. The character designer is Ohisashiburi Sensei. You probably know her from designing quite a few characters from Azurland. If any of what I've listed caught your attention, feel free to close this video and check the game out for yourself. If you still want to stay here to listen to my shitty voice, then at least be aware of some slight spoilers ahead. As mentioned earlier, the game is kind of a racing sim light similar to that of the Princess Maker series where you take care of a streamer girl named Ame, no data Ame, this Ame. And when she is streaming, Ame dons the internet personality of an angel on earth called K-Angel, possibly as a shout out to her favorite wrestler. Your goal is to achieve 1 million subscribers in 30 days, and on each day you can pick activities for Ame to do from morning to dusk to night. Each activity will have different effects on Ame, like increasing or decreasing her stress, her affection towards you, or her mental darkness. Some activities being carried out at the right time might open up new stream topics for Ame to carry out, and unlocking new topics is very important as you can't carry out a stream with the same topic twice. Wait, this doesn't sound right at all. Are we sure this is a streaming simulator? Let me check out an actual streamer that I know. Holy fucking shit! So, what kind of activities can Ame carry out? Can you, you know, her? You're probably wondering. No, this is not an R18 game. There's absolutely no explicit content in this game. And K Angel is a poor angel, knows not of earthly desires. So wipe that sinful thought off your mind, you perverse. There are plenty of activities for you good boys and good girls out there though, like playing video games, or watching streaming services, or shit posting on not 5 jan or whatever the fuck this is. Streaming can only be carried out exclusively at night though, because who the fuck watches streams in the morning? I do! What does this game have against Moa? Anyway, when Ame streams as her internet personality, K Angel, you act as some sort of moderator to her chat, where you can delete inappropriate comments to relieve Ame of one stress, or pick up some super chats for Ame to read and react to at the end of her stream. I don't like this moderator thing much as the streaming sessions are fairly short. There are barely any inappropriate comments and less so with the super chat. And the content as well as the chat of the streams are always the same across all playthroughs. So the gameplay session feels really underdeveloped and somewhat unneeded. I think the devs also probably feel the same because there's a very noticeable skip button up above the chat. The racing sim aspect of the game could have been a lot more in-depth, but it doesn't, and even feel like there are cut contents at parts. Like for example, for the stream topic where Ame discusses movies with the chat, there's a cinephile bonus in the prompt, but none of the activities offer said bonus. For the going out activity, you have the whole Tokyo to hang out in, but almost all of them offer the same stats reward of relieving stress and increasing affection. So aside from a few times that hanging out at a certain place leading to a new stream topic being unlocked, you don't really have much incentive to try out new dating places and just go straight to the hospital to take your meds because that place can also reduce Ames' mental darkness stats. Taking medications exactly as told by the game is pretty much useless and is a total waste of turn since it barely reduces Ames' stress and doesn't give new stream idea or anything at all, and it's actually more efficient to let Ame knock a whole boil down her throat instead. 
or maybe that last one was intentional because you know the game is called Nitty Girl of a Dose of Toe. Saving what I think was the most disappointing for last is the messaging. At any given time of the day, Ame will without fail send you messages to ask for your undivided attention and you must reply to her messages or face with a potential early bad end. This is like chatting with a chatbot, except most of the time you can only chat using a very limited amount of emojis and the response you get from Ame is just as limited. What the hell does this emoji even do? This? This what? This Nash. If you're lucky, she may ask you to write a shitpost for her to post on the Not 5 Jan though, so there's that. With that said, the game is very short, with one playthrough lasting only about an hour, even less so with future playthroughs because you can always skip over streams and tweets that you've already seen before that the bare minimum gameplay isn't much of an issue. I do wish that they could have been a bit more in-depth though. Once you realize that the only important start to get more followers is stream streak, and knowing how to unlock more stream ideas after a few playthroughs, all that's left is going through the motion, skipping a major part of the game to reach the ending that you haven't seen yet. Thankfully, where the gameplay falls short, the writing department picks up the slack and holy shit does it carries the game. The game is just chock full of references from all sorts of sources that I can't help but clap when I notice the game trying to pull a fast one on me. Though don't let the overabundance of in-your-face references fool you into thinking that that's all the game has going for them. The stream chat, MS tweets and messages to you, and anonymous posts on not 5 chan show the depth deep understanding of streaming cultures and those involved, as well as the disturbing nature of a cringy girlfriend with an unstable mental health. I don't know about you, but some of the stuff I found in this game really hit very dangerously close to home for me. It makes me wonder if the devs didn't scout through the internet to look for old problematic tweets and posts and put them into the game an or something, and the fucked upness of everything just got more and more escalated as you play more of the game and is forced to do more and more degenerate shit to see what's left of the game you haven't seen yet. What? Are you to the streamers you're so religiously following? Are you an actual entity to them? Or are you but digital data being represented as mere text and numbers in the eyes of the streamer? What about the streamers themselves? You know who they are on stream but do you really know who they are when they are off stream? Are they really doing this streaming thing out of passion because they genuinely have something on their mind that they are so desperately wanting to share with the rest of the world? Or are they just here for the money? or just cloud chasing to enjoy the feeling of seeing numbers going up? Or is this whole streaming thing ultimately just a form of copying practices in the age where people are getting more and more connected to each other virtually via the internet? But physically speaking, never before have the humankind been so further away from each other. Anyway, the writing is really good and the writer dude as well as their localizers really did their homework, is what I want to say. Would love to show you more proof of that, but I more than this would be really spoiler territory and I would prefer if you play the game and experience it for yourself. For a game that has streamer as the focus point, it for some reason decides to go with the look of Windows 98 and it does a really good job emulating the aesthetic. It even manages to translate the character design of Ohisashiburi Sensei really well into pixel art and that is definitely no easy task. Just look at the way Ohisashiburi Sensei draws her characters. Look at how she uses color and make it seems like the outfits are made out of high quality silk that reflects the colorful rays of light or something. Now compare it to the in-game sprites. Pretty good job on the devs if you ask me. Aside from Ames and k Joe's sprites, the game doesn't really have anything else that wow me much. The background drawings occupying the size of the screen to make the game look more like old Windows 98 game looks pretty nice and atmospheric and I wish that there are more CG scenes featuring such background but there were none unfortunately. The main color palette used for most of the screen being sickly pink purplish color doesn't sit very well with me but I recognize that this is more of my problem and not the game being bad visually. The visual glitch effect to represent Ame being high as the sky whenever she takes her mates is 
Ray Star the Run of the Mill stuff is not bad, but I think the game could definitely make it trippier considering how it's supposed to be the third focus of the game. But eh, my only experience with a trip to trippy view is from watching Doctor Strange, so what do I know? The soundtrack is an quite taste, I guess. I'm okay with some of the slower pieces and find them to be even very comfy to enjoy together with a cup of coffee or morning tea. But uh, for the majority of the soundtrack, I just find them to be very crazy and all over the place. Which admittedly probably was what the composers are going for considering how all over the place Ames mental health is. And like it or hate it, I bet by the time you're done with the game, you'll be having living rent free in your head. So kudos to the composer, I guess. As a game, I think it falls a bit short, but as an experience, it was one hell of an experience thanks to its writing. Also, thanks to its timing of release, the writing in-game combined with what was going on in a certain part of the world made it an extra hysterically hilarious experience for me. It's like live imitates art or something. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a traveler from the distant future and don't know what I'm blabbling about, then I pity your poor soul for not being able to experience the highest of high of the game like I did. I really do. <laughs> if you're looking for a racing sim where you can groom your own two view streamers, please look over to Twitch or YouTube instead of Steam. But if you want a relatively short game that has some really solid writing about the current state of streaming culture, with some unexpectedly deep dive into the unstable mind of an anime girl and maybe have some change to spare, then go ahead and buy the game. Could either get a few chuckles out of you or make you reflecting back on what the fuck you've been doing with your life, who knows. If I were to give scores to the game, it would be something like this. Bruh, the first sign that should tell you how this game is fictitious as all hell is how Ame looks cuter than her cosplay self. <laughs>